Hello, welcome and thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumansin, continuing with VI election coverage. There was a change in the lineup for the senatorial race after walking absentee ballots and provisional ballots were counted Tuesday. News 2's Erica Bivens brings us the latest standings and how many votes are still at large. Even though the primaries are over, one race is still too close to call, and many of those candidates attended Tuesday's counting of walk-in absentee ballots and provisional ballots to see where they might stand. So I need to know where I'm going from here, whether I'm going forward or whether I'm congratulating the winners. And I would like to commend those that have already won, that are clearly in the general, and I hope I will be able to join them. And after the count, both Justin Harrigan and Donald Cole have joined the top seven spots for the St. Thomas St. John Democratic seat for Senate, but it's not by much. Cole maintains his number six position just ahead of Harrigan by 30 votes. Meanwhile, Harrigan has inched ahead of Gene Ford to capture the number seven spot, but Ford is only four votes behind, and the standings could change again as 113 absentee ballots are still at large. We have no control over the delivery of the ballots once they're mailed. So we don't know how many persons have received them uh, and sent them back, how many people have not received them. And we have persons who are now faxing their ballots back, which is a good thing. Because, of course, faxes would be faster than the postal service. Now, under VI code, mailed absentee ballots have 10 days after the election to be returned and counted, which takes us to Tuesday, September 18th. And some election board members say they'll be waiting here at the post offices to ensure ballots are collected by the 5 p.m. deadline. Overall, Alicia Wells says Tuesday went pretty smoothly. By before 10 o'clock last night, we were finished, which was good. So yes, it went smoothly, yes. There are always some wrinkles that could be worked out. And um, as in any process, there's some bumps, but we've gotten it done so far. And we're happy that we're able to now sit and wait for the other ballots to come in. For News 2, I'm Erica Bivens. Now for questions or concerns, visit vivote.gov. You can also find their consent decree posted under election information. Well, members from the VI Board of Education visited the territory schools right before school began. And again, during the first week of school overall, they said they were pleased that schools were ready for students, but they were concerned with several issues. News News' Erica Parsons has more. We were very pleased, especially with the administrative and teacher response as we visited schools. Education board officials say their tour of the territory schools during the last two weeks revealed that the administration and particularly teachers were well prepared. I was very pleased to see the amount of work uh, teachers had done. The, the welcome signs were up, the schedule for the day, um, the attendance process. Apparently there's a new process for taking the attendance it's computerized. Those same visits revealed other concerns the board says are urgent. As we are aware, the amount of uh, ground schemas in the St. Croix district that has been relieved, that has created a, a problem, a sore thumb, because the aesthetic values of some schools are simply not there because the manpower isn't available. There were some schools where the principals indicated to us that they did not have groundskeeping service or uh, some maintenance service. If you're going to dismiss a layoff grounds Keepers, a plan needs to be put in place that still ensures that our schools are going to be kept clean of debris and other things that would hamper the safety of personnel and also students. The tour showed the St. Thomas St. John District was short nine nurses and in both a lack of academic teachers. Board of Education officials say the Department of Education has not been notified of their concerns. That will happen during Saturday's board meeting when Education Commissioner Terry gives her state of education. Erica Parsons, News 2. The governor and senators will also get a copy of that report. The board is required by law to make schools, plant and facilities visits to determine whether or not schools are ready for students. Guidance counselors at the Synchro Educational Complex are creating an email tree that will allow parents to receive important information on their children's progress. Parents are kindly asked to submit their email address to the corresponding counselors. Parents with 12th grade students should email counselor Karen Maynard 11th grade students, Counselor Earl Esdale. 10th grade students, Counselor Prudentia Miller. 9th grade students, last name beginning with letters A to I, Counselor Alicia Fowlerly. And 9th grade, letters J to Z. Email Counselor Toya Plunkett-Jacobs. 
Parents should include their full names and students name in the email. For more information, you can call 778-2036 extension 5818. Governor John P. DeYoung Jr. has said yes to Senator Terrence Nelson's bill for a referendum to allow voters to vote for or against legalizing industrial hemp. Senators passed the bill in August with a 10 to 4 vote. The governor's approval will now allow for what he calls an opinion poll to be conducted. This will let voters choose yes or no on their ballots in November's general election on whether legislation should be drafted to allow for industrial hemp production in the Virgin Islands. St. John police have arrested a man who is wanted in the state of Florida. 37-year-old Alfred Matthias Jr. was detained while trying to enter the U.S. Virgin Islands from the British Virgin Islands. Matthias, who is originally from St. Thomas, is wanted in Florida for grand theft, cultivation of marijuana, armed trafficking of marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia. VIPD arrested Matthias on September 5th, and following an arraignment on the 7th, authorities in Florida will relocate Matthias back to Florida for court proceedings there. Police on St. Thomas arrested 28-year-old Darian Brady for holding his girlfriend against her will and threatening her with a weapon. Brady and his girlfriend were arguing in a car and traveled to another location where he threatened to use his gun on her. The victim was able to pass a note to a restaurant worker to call the police. Officers then found the couple parked by the Edward Wilmoth Blyden Marine Terminal and inspected the vehicle, finding a black tour gun under the driver's seat. Brady has been charged with false imprisonment, kidnapping and assault, third degree domestic violence. Turning our attention, overseas four people are dead in Libya following an attack on the U.S. consulate office in, in the city of Benjai. Susan McGinnis has the story from Washington, D.C. The White House confirms J. Christopher Stevens, the U.S. ambassador to Libya, and three others were killed in the Libyan city of Benghazi. In a statement, President Obama condemned the attack, saying we all must unequivocally oppose the kind of senseless violence that took the lives of these public servants. Gunmen charged the consulate and set fire to the building. They were reportedly upset about an American film they say ridicules the Islamic prophet Muhammad. The film was also linked to protests in Cairo, Egypt. There, demonstrators scaled the walls of the U.S. Embassy and tore down the American flag. We will never accept that our uh, prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa uh, might be humiliated. In response, the U.S. Embassy in Egypt issued a statement saying it condemns the continuing efforts by misguided individuals to hurt the religious feelings of Muslims. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton clarified and said, let me be clear, there is never any justification for violence of this kind. But it was a statement from the U.S. Embassy in Egypt that sparked a political firestorm between the Obama and Romney campaigns. Buckeye State, thank you so much. Mitt Romney responded in a statement saying it's disgraceful that the Obama administration's first response was not to condemn attacks on our diplomatic missions, but to sympathize with those who wage the attacks. Hello, West Palm Beach! An Obama campaign spokesman responded to Romney saying we are shocked that Governor Romney would choose to launch a political attack. Susan McGinnis, CBS News, Washington. And keeping our eye on the economy, soon it will be easier to find how many calories are in a Big Mac. McDonald's will start posting calorie information on all its restaurant and drive through menus starting Monday. It's taking the action ahead of a government regulation that could require all major chains to post the information as early as next year. Here's a Colson Bell at the New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank's Stock Market Watch. The Dow up 9, NASDAQ 9, S&P 3. Coming up on News 2, the University of the Virgin Islands conducts a survey that aims to provide a clearer understanding of the changing population. Details coming up next. Plus, a glimpse of one hermit crab is intriguing. However, how about a million on one beach? This video shot in St. John has gone viral and even made national news. We'll give you a peek 